let's get Chris mm -hmm. Starwalt's take on all this. Fox News politics editor Chris. We, st we were talking about trade an hour ago, and again, Trump just hands us a gift. <laughs> unless you're Chevy, uh, unless you're a GM <laughs> stockholder, General then he's Motors, not handing exactly. you a gift this new year. Uh, you know, whether or not Congress wants to help him do this uh, is a big question, as we see from his pick for U.S. Trade Representative, as we've seen with Wilbur Ross in Commerce and creating this new position, uh, for which is basically uh, beating up China. Uh, they're serious. There's a lot that the president can do unilaterally. There's a lot that the, an administration can do when it comes to trade deals. When it comes to placing tariffs on goods manufactured overseas, you're probably going to need Congress on that. Uh, and I'm, I kind of doubt, maybe I'm wrong, I kind of doubt that he could find majorities for massive tariffs. I just, I, maybe he could. I don't know. It, you know, he says it well in a tweet, but it, this is such a complicated issue, particularly when it comes to automobiles manufactured in this country. I'll point out that more than half, this is a Ford, the Ford Focus, more than half the parts in the Ford Focus are made outside of the U.S. and Canada. Twenty percent of the parts are made in Mexico. And, the, and you have even like components in an individual seat a car seat made by an outside company, they might come from half in the United States or half in right. Mexico. So it's just not that easy an issue to kind of discuss on Twitter. But if what you're trying to do, and this is, the, this is the, the Trump way, what you're trying to do is create leverage. You want to create leverage. You want to create the threat so that the companies do what you want them to do without you actually having to do it. I think Donald Trump must know, Wilbur Ross must know, all of his team must know that a trade war with China right now could be debilitating for the United States. I assume none of them want that any more than he wants a new nuclear arms race with Russia. But I assume that the Trump position is you take a maximal position at the beginning, the art of the deal way, you ask for something way over the top, and then hope that you get what you want because they're afraid of having that you might go all the way to the mattresses for it. Steve, how do you feel about this? Because, and, and I've raised this issue, and, and people who are ardent Trump supporters dis dismiss it and co tell me that I'm foolish. But when Donald Trump is tweeting about individual publicly traded companies like this, because he's done it with Boeing, he, he's doing it with General Motors right now, and when you, when you get in a situation where you're, he's president-elect, he hadn't been inaugurated yet, but you are moving a stock maybe. Whether the issue is legitimate or not, how do you feel about that? Well, the first thing he did was carrier, which uh, even, right. uh, which is legitimate in the sense that he was showing he's going to deliver for American workers. It was symbolic, uh, build up some political capital. But if you try to uh, micromanage every American company and what they do in terms of uh, parts across borders, very, very difficult, as you point out. An American car today has got to have half their components are probably manufactured overseas. Or you could take parts of a made in America, uh, put together in uh, Mexico, and then ship back to the United States yes. or China, yes. as Apple does. So uh, it, it's immensely complicated. But in terms of tariffs, uh, and then I'd like to ask Chris on this, doesn't the president have enormous uh, powers, especially in the Commerce Department with the so-called anti-dumping mm -hmm. Powers, Section 201, Section 301, passed back in the 1980s, where if they deem that something is being brought in uh, that isn't kosher, below cost, they can uh, arbitrarily put on uh, tariffs? He does, in fact. He does, in fact. And uh, his choice for U.S. Trade Representative, and I don't want to mispronounce his last name, uh, somebody say it for me, uh, but uh, his choice there is the guy who used that provision, pushed, helped push the Bush administration with Wilbur Ross, who was cleaning up on junk stocks in the steel industry at the time, to use that action against China on steel, the only successful dumping prosecution, basically, that's been made. The problem is, of course, if you trigger it, if you say, yes, this is happening, then you've got to go to world court, you have to defend it, you have to deal with this, as other countries say, you're engaging in unfair trade practices, and you can still kick off the trade war that way. Chris, uh, we get a pass because we're Southern and we mispronounce things anyway, but it's Robert Lighthizer. As, as Lighthizer. I, Lighthizer. As I, as they I'm they don't have any Lighthizers in Philadelphia, West Virginia, and I'm sorry. No, you just mumble it and you get a pass. I, what were you going to say really quick? I, I was going to say, some you, other you have to imagine, though, the frustration. I think, Chris, you hit it before when you alluded to the fact that Trump wants to at least begin developing leverage, which we currently do not have. He's inherited, essentially, eight years of capitulation across the board Absolutely. in almost every major negotiation. So to some degree, he's starting in a, the president-elect starting in a deficit uh, as far as the American position. So 
you do need to sometimes at least create that kind of movement to say, look, you're dealing with a new sheriff in town now, and some of that's going to be a lot harder negotiating and bargaining than you probably thought you'd have. I just wonder why the, the crew, the Chevy Cruze sedan is on Trump's mind when he wakes up on <laughs> Tuesday, well, one of the January the 3rd. He, he wants to help American auto manufacturers get rid of those mileage standards, which are uh, hugely, yep. hugely wasteful. Imposed by President Obama. And that's and why companies manufacture these cars in Mexico. Normally, they wouldn't manufacture them at all. But they have to do it because they have to meet these mileage standards. Right. The cruise and isn't that ugly. I mean, it's not pretty, but they ugly. might still make it. I didn't say ugly. I think that the cruise <laughs> is a lovely car. <laughs> I know someone who bought one recently, actually, because wow. we're Southern and we're American. Mm -hmm. I want to move on to President-elect Trump also tweeting about Obamacare this morning. Here's what he had to say on the Twitter. Quote, people must remember that Obamacare just does not work, and it is not affordable. 160% increase is Arizona, in parenthesis. Bill Clinton called it, quote, crazy. The Democrat governor of Minnesota said the Affordable Care Act, Obamacare, is no longer affordable, and it is lousy health care. Again, is... <laughs> why are you laughing? Because it's like just one more thing, and it's lousy, just so that we're, everybody's clear at the end. Very Trump, very, the Trump rim shot. But, but you know what? This is something that the people voted for him because they want it dismantled. And, Chris, how quickly can they do it? It's not just the repeal. It's the place they also have to worry about. So what conservatives in Washington are anxious about right now is just that. The repeal is fun and easy. Uh, it's never been popular, particularly even among Democrats. There have been deep misgivings about the law, its use of mandates, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So the repeal part not only is generally popular, but also you get a huge tax cut. Because remember, there is a large tax on incomes over $250,000 that's in Obamacare. You can pull that all out right off the top. And then what you do is you say, we'll get right back to you on replacement. We'll get right back to you. And the current plan is it's got a two-year delay before the coverage components come out. Could that be delayed three years? Could that be delayed more? Could this become a big, a big hole in the deficit, in deficit spending? You better believe it. So that's the anxiety in Washington. The repeal part's easy, the replace part's hard, and we don't have a replace part yet. And just real quick, because I know that Steve will weigh in on this, because a, a tax break is the way that you could deal with um, a refundable tax credit is the way that you could deal with the subsidy that you get, but you actually don't like that because, again, it complicates the tax code rather mm. than making it more simple. You can have high-risk pools, which states used to have before Obamacare, where you uh, take in people who can't get regular insurance or chronic conditions without junking up the tax code and just targeting people who have problems getting health care, like food stamps, however you think it's administered, it does target people who have a problem, not doing it for everybody. Chris, it was great to see you, my dear. Chris Starwalt joining happy us. Happy New Year, guys. Happy, happy New, New Year. Year. A very happy one indeed.